thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts on this restriction topic. Uh, PWS Malaysia is a national association uh, since uh, six, seven years ago. Uh, we have uh, since been very active in FB. Uh, and also we just uh, two years ago uh, implemented our website. So therefore I believe parents are very well informed of the challenges of hyperplasia in, in the children. Uh, except that obviously uh, Malaysia is a big country. Uh, we have got the East and West Malaysia separated by the South China Sea, which is almost like a uh, four hours flight, you know, to the next, uh, to, the, to the East Malaysia. So over there, I believe uh, there may be a bit difficult because uh, those are a bit more rural area. So uh, that is where, I mean, generally in our population about uh, mostly 50% uh, of them are actually said staying in rural area. And the active ones are actually, the parents are active ones are actually in, in, in our home state, Kuala Lumpur, uh, our back capital state. So uh, that's why I say uh, on the home front, the family dynamics may be complicated because each family members uh, have their own, especially siblings have their own favorite food, uh, food choices. No? So, so as you know, in Malaysia, the majority of our population, uh, about 70% of them are Muslim. And being Muslim, uh, because they uh, do not, I mean, the religion uh, kind of uh, this discourage birth control. So they have a very large families, uh, averaging around uh, four to five uh, kids. Uh, and then some of them live in multi-generation homes. So uh, thus, educating such large families on the do's and don'ts of and ensuring compliance or follow through uh, of, of the food choices or of this, uh, you know, uh, restricted food is actually a constant headache. So uh, access to food uh, via social media nowadays and, uh, and the food delivery, you know, uh, uh, during the COVID, uh, during COVID or now after COVID is very rampant, right? I mean, everybody order food and they can be delivered to the home. I mean, the media, I mean, as you know, have glorified uh, culinary arts and celebrity chef, right? I think you all know about the celebrity chef uh, program, right? The Master Chef uh, reality, reality show, uh, the Australian one, I love it the most, you know? So, my, I mean, everybody, including my kids, are following through this uh, celebrity chef uh, show and everything. And then uh, most of them, you ask them, what is their dream job? Just like my son, they say, I like to be a chef. Right, they want to go into culinary arts, so that is a problem now, you know, because of this proliferation of uh, of, of food. Uh, like just like my daughter, you know, uh, whenever we have a meal, a good meal, you know what happened? He will use his phone to eat first. His phone will take a photo first before before her, you know. That's how it is now, <laughs> right? So it is difficult. So in Malaysia, they say there is no meeting without eating, right? When two people meet. The next thing they on their mind is food. So friends and siblings, you know, always post regularly on what and where they eat just now. You know what I mean? So the dilemma of the PDS person is always under pressure, right? Because to be like everyone else. I mean, it's like my kid, my daughter say, oh, I'm going out for, uh, for a meal. I'm going to do lunch, we have dinner, Japanese, stuff like that. So what about him? What about my what about my kid? What about my 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 you know his younger brother? You know, he feels it, right? He also want to hang out, definitely, right? Those are the good things in life. So, I mean, that is an issue now, right? Uh, that's a dilemma of everybody else in this in, in the world now, you know, because of social media. So they want to eat whatever they want, just like everyone else. In Malaysia, 65% of us eat out at least one meal in a day. That's a research done by a professor, right? So this professor is from France, right? In fact, he also handles a lot of PWS uh, program. So he says that that is basically the biggest, uh, I think one of the biggest uh, percentage in the world, 65% of them eat one meal a day, including myself. I do so too. You know, my family, you know, uh, we do not cook uh, at home during weekend. Right, uh, but luckily we make it up by going hiking as a family, right? We just try to burn the fat. The whole family go hiking every weekend, twice a week. I mean, I mean every Saturday and Sunday. So 
in terms of giving independence to my son, Ken, uh, I've done so for many years. Uh, as I bring him out everywhere, I go to work. Because uh, since eight, nine years ago, he's been following me every time, every day. I mean, I can say that it's a roller coaster ride with many up and down. I mean, you can set the parameters, but over time, I mean, they can get smarter and then they'll test the parameters and they will definitely break them, you know. I mean, I, I always do work in the campuses at the universities. I will go for meetings. And then, you know, I would, I would do the meeting there and then he will be at the reception counter. But you know why? I mean, it's a long meeting. He'll go to the toilet. On the way to the toilet, there is a cafeteria. So you know what will happen, right? But there was a cafeteria, you're in trouble, right? Because he's alone. So I mean, the thing is about it is that we must uh, kind of like uh, check the parameters, right? Uh, kind of like, what can we do? So I believe uh, we should actually understand that actually for him to benefit, uh, for him to interact with people is also quite good. You know why? Because his uh, interpersonal skill has gone uh, very well. Do you know why? Because he can even get food and drinks free every time, you know. He can do that now. Uh, but then, I mean, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking now that we should together try to work. Uh, it's a work in progress on how we could balance restriction and independence so that uh, they can continue to interact in public, but with a controlled environment. In the long run, if we can crack the code on how to impart self-preservation on their psyche, I think half the battle will be won. Okay, moving forward, I believe if so can play a role to create a structure and roadmap for adults to transition, to bring more independence for them to lead self-fulfilling lives. But in Malaysia and in most Southeast Asian countries, uh, you know, there's no government funding for group homes. There's zero group homes and there's no respite care facilities unless it's funded privately. So it is very difficult to implement. I mean, uh, however, I believe we definitely must build capacity on the local front and empower the local to lead, right? Based on the cultural norms of the diverse country in Southeast Asia, right? I mean, the eating habits, and obviously half the population here also not easy to put food on the table, right? So when you have a food or a full meal, it's like, wow, you know, you eat like crazy. So the back, so basically we must in our own country in Southeast Asia, we will have to adapt and adopt the best practice recommended by IPSO. Personally, I, I do not support a uh, chemical interaction uh, sorry, chemical intervention uh, for people who are uh, those tough cases, since I don't believe there is any long-term uh, benefits. I do strongly advocate uh, carrying those extreme cases in a holistic, self-sustainable rural environment, like the one in Sovnak, uh, so Sovnak, right, in, in Denmark. Uh, I think I believe I have met them also in the IPSO Global Conference. So, I mean, they basically have very beautiful uh, care, group homes in the farm, in the island. I love those settings, you know, it's fantastic. So I really have a dream that I can do so in Malaysia. That's why I strongly believe that the holistic, self-sustainable rural environment like care farm, I believe also in uh, Australia, there's starting a few, and also in Europe, uh, there are, I think a lot of them in Europe and in, in Ireland uh, that have family uh, with, fat, with animals and nature will do them wonders. So this control setting, you know, with added fitness and psychology therapy will hopefully heal them and then give them a sense of well-being and definitely a purpose in life. Thank you so much.